First field test shot. Rolling. Kicking it yeah. off. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Moore and we're here on the Sunshine Coast for the Value Bikes field trip. And we're testing full suspension bikes between two and three thousand dollars. At twenty-five hundred US dollars, we had to include the giant Transex. We recently tested the most expensive version of this bike with Fox Live Valve and a fancy carbon frame. And so we were curious to see how the budget bike stacked up. The Transex has 135 millimeters of rear travel paired with a 150 millimeter fork. It comes in four sizes, small through extra large. What does the X stand for, you may ask? Well, the Giant Trans X has 20 millimeters more travel front and rear over the regular Trans. It also has adjustable geometry, which makes it the only bike that we're testing that has that feature. The aluminum frame has room for a water bottle, it fits up to 2.5 inch tires, and it has boost spacing. Other details include internally routed cables, a press fit BB, and protection on the down tube and on the chainstay. To achieve that adjustable geometry, like many other brands, Giant uses a flip chip, so you can either set the bike in a high or a low position, and that means we've got twice as many numbers for this geometry section. The change that flip chip makes is actually quite substantial at 0.7 degrees and 10 millimeters at the bottom bracket. In the low setting, the head tube angle is 65.5 degrees and it can steep enough to 66.2 degrees. On our size medium test bike, the reach sits at 456 millimeters in the low position or 464 millimeters in the high position. The Trans X's 135 millimeters of rear suspension are controlled by Giant's Maestro dual link suspension design that creates a virtual floating pivot. Giant says it's independent of both pedaling and braking inputs, but they would say that, wouldn't they? One cool thing that Giant does to save weight is they use the same bolt for the main pivot and the lower shock mount. Our test bike here is the Giant Trans X 293 and it retails for $2,500. It comes with a 150mm RockShox 35 gold fork and Fox float rear shock. It comes with SRAM's 12-speed SX drivetrain, Dior 4-piston hydraulic brakes and a Giant contact switch trapper post. It has a Maxxis Minion DHF front tire and a dissector rear tire. All in all, it weighs 33 pounds and 2 ounces. And there you have it, that's all the details on the Giant Trans X. Let's talk about what you really want to hear, how it rides out on the trail. So we set up the suspension according to the manufacturer's suggested settings, of course, and then we don't have control tires for these bikes, so we set up the tires that came with the bike to 21, 23 PSI to have an even playing field across all the bikes. And then we put the bike in the low uh, geometry setting, we know that's what you guys are gonna do out there, straight to the low slack setting. And then also to be fair though, our test trails pretty fast and rough and that's the setting that you would wanna run the bike in. Exactly, yeah, so that's why we chose the low setting for this test. Right. We're gonna talk about how it performed on the way up and let's start with pedaling performance, Sarah. What did you think? Yeah, so the Giant Trans X, it's got that 135 millimeter rear travel and it's quite an active rear travel. Yeah, it is. And so when you're climbing, you're, you know, it's not going to feel like get up and go like that Ibis Ripley or, mm -hmm. you know, even the Marshall has a more uh, firm pedaling position. So it's not as efficient. You're like, you're going to lose a little bit of energy yep. to the trail. It's very comfortable feeling. There's a lot of traction but it's not like that super get up and go, like yeah. all the power I'm putting down is like helping me go forward on the trail. Right, when I was riding the Transax, it never felt all that sporty to me. And then I would look down while I was pedaling and I could just see that rocker link going. Now, we did just a while back test a Transax with live valve suspension. And I remember saying something like, you know, I don't think this bike needs the live valve, pedals fine without it. Well... You didn't have this bike to compare it to, right? right. To and that, be fair. Yeah, that really underlines how important back-to-back -back testing is. So the Giant is a very active bike, and Sarah, I think you agree with me. 
that you were reaching down and hit that pedal assist switch yeah, all the time. Yeah, definitely a bike that would be well suited to live valve. Obviously, you're not going to get that on a $2,500 bike. I no. think that's probably what live valve costs, you know. Yeah, it's all, yeah <laughs> It'll double knows? the cost of the bike by adding live valve. But yeah. there is a lockout and a climb position. And so, yeah, I definitely found myself reaching for that on, you know, some of those climbs, the smoother, longer climbs. and. Yeah, definitely right. an active bike. We actually ended up riding this bike with less sag. Yeah, firmer suspension setup, and that definitely does help, but the bike is still noticeably active. You know, even at 25% sag and a little bit less, the bike is still moving around a little bit too much for our liking. All right, Sarah, so we got to the top of the hill. We've unlocked the suspension. The bike is back in party mode. It's time to go down. Let's talk about the Giant's strengths, where it shines on the descents first. Yeah, so it's a super forgiving bike. So if you're in a lot of rougher terrain, you can just kind of let the Giant go. Do the work for you, right? Do the work for you. And it has that active suspension. So it's gonna just absorb all those bumps for you. Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna be as tiring. So I think another thing that we should mention too is that active, deep feeling suspension definitely steals some of the bike's pop, you know? And I, I know that you could add more air and run less sag, and that works, we did that. Um, but the bike, it definitely doesn't feel like it has as much, what's the word, life to it as the other bikes. Mm -hmm. This is a loud bike. Some of that noise comes from the front end, but there's also some chain slap as well that's a little bit too loud for our liking. And that dropper post as well. Yeah, the dropper post rattles as mm -hmm. well, which is kind of annoying. Just you're coming down the hill and you just hear like constantly like. Yeah, it's definitely like you're coming down the hill and you're like, people are gonna hear me coming and they're gonna move out of the way. Right. So it's kind of a safety feature. <laughs> but there are a couple other things to mention, Sarah. Yeah, so it comes with a SRAM SX drivetrain, so that 12-speed drivetrain, good range, mm -hmm. but it has poor ergonomics with the shifter, so it's really hard to reach. Bit of a reach. Bit of a reach, yeah. Yeah. All right, Sarah, the last component that I want to ask you about are the brakes. It has those MT-401s, and I like them on the Growler. Um, the Rocky Growler has the same brakes on it. The one thing is, I just wish it didn't have those resin pads. The brakes on the Giant work well. They're, you know, you can stop with them, so that's always nice. That's great! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'd say that's a component that I was a fan of on this bike. All right, Sarah, what other components stood out to you on this Giant? It came with great rubber. It had that Maxxis Minion front tire and then the Dissector rear tire. Mm -hmm. Really well suited to this bike's intended use. You're not going to have to upgrade those. Yeah, that's kind of a do-everything combo, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got a predictable front tire and then a rear tire on the back that rolls reasonably fast, but still provides lots of traction. Okay, it's time to talk pros and cons, Sarah. Let's start with the pros, what'd you like? I thought that on the climbs, that active suspension, while it might not have been as efficient as other bikes, it is really comfortable and it doesn't beat you up on the climbs and you've got tons of traction. The other thing about this bike that makes it interesting is that flip chip and the adjustable geometry. Mm -hmm. And so it actually is quite a substantial change at 0.7 degrees. And so if you kind of want to play around with that, like this is the only bike that'll give you that option. Yeah, none of the other value bikes here have adjustable geometry. So I think that's definitely worth noting. Mm -hmm. All right, Sarah, next up, we're talking cons. Hit me. So that active suspension, it's very noticeable on both the climbs and the descents and not always in a good way. And then the other part is that the bike is just quite noisy with that fork, dropper post, mm -hmm. chain stay slab, everything. So I'd say where the Giant loses is on the suspension front. So with that RockShox 35, it has the gold fork, mm -hmm. which is an upgrade from the Da Vinci that had the silver The fork. TK fork, yeah, mm -hmm. the TK damper in it. Uh, and then the other thing it loses on is that drivetrain. It's not the Dior that we've got on some of the other bikes. A little bit crisper shifting, better mm -hmm. ergonomics. And so. it's interesting because, I mean, Giant is a really big company, so they've got, you know, branded giant dropper posts, giant branded handlebar stems. They're kind of saving costs, you would think, on those things. Uh, and then you would hope to see an upgraded drivetrain and suspension, but that's not the case. <laughs> All right, Sarah, it is time to wrap up our review of Giant's Trance X. So I want you to tell me who it suits and the type of terrain that it belongs on. Yeah, so the Giant Trance X is definitely suited to a rider who prioritizes forgiveness and traction over all out speed. And it's gonna be somebody who's riding 
maybe slower speed trails, but a lot more technical. Rough and chunky terrain, in other words. Exactly, let's All plow right. right through it. Exactly. All right, and that's it for the Trans X. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our field trip review videos and roundtable discussions because there are a whole bunch more coming.